Hi, welcome to another episode of Mom Does It All. If you're looking for encouragement, empowerment, and uplifting in motherhood and mompreneurship, this is a show for you. I'm your host, Marta Spurk, triplet mom, certified success coach, and all things motivation extraordinaire. In this episode, I'll be talking about dreading, or more specifically, how important it is for you to ditch the dreading. Have you noticed the more you dread something, the worse of a picture you paint of it? Basically, dreading doesn't make anything better, so we have to stop. We have to learn to make the most of any situation for our own sake and for everybody around us. Let's dive in. All I seem to do these days is evaluate my feelings and really my thoughts because your thoughts become feelings and then they become actions and then they become your reality. And as I've been sharing with you guys over and over again, the more you know yourself, the more you know where all of the things that you are today are coming from, the more aware you are to make changes, to be a better person, you know, to change patterns that are not working for you, that are not serving you in your life. And that's where, you know, the whole thing of looking for self-sabotage and the secret saboteurs in your life is so, 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 so helpful. Looking back into your history, really, into the history of your family, into your role models. And so I had shared um, on social media that, like, everything seemed to be going wrong before my birthday. Um, it was, it was, it was crazy. And I was trying to remain positive, but it's been quite overwhelming with Shane working out of town four times a week and me having to be alone with the kids. Even when I have help doing the day and sometimes my brother-in-law comes to help me at night, it's just a lot to take on at this age. Toddlers are no joke. And two boys at that, they're always, you know, fighting over toys and, Gloria is the sweetest thing. She just follows me around all day, but I can't leave her alone for one second. <laughs> so if you can relate, just drop me a message and tell me, amen, sister. I know exactly what you're going through because it's it's not easy, especially now with the winter. We can't go out as much when it's cold, uh, when it's snowing or whatever. So it's tough. And so I was really, really frustrated and with everything that was happening, like leading up to my birthday, I was like, no, I want to enjoy, you know, I want to enjoy these weeks, these days, even if I'm having a hard time, especially because this is what I'm telling people all the time, you know, you're in control of your thoughts and your emotions. And then for some reason, for me, I was struggling more than usual. And I started thinking back to last year and how the plans that I had for my birthday were stifled too. Uh, we were planning, we had already booked a hotel, um, in the mountains at this like casino town uh, to just stay at the hotel and, and, and have fun at the casino just for one night, literally. And then that very week, I popped a tire. We were going to an appointment. I was taking the kids to an appointment by myself, and I popped a tire, and I had to call AAA, but because my, my van is all-wheel drive, there is no spare, so they had to tow my car, meaning we had to take all of the chairs and put it in Shane's truck, so we had to get off work. Thankfully, uh, the site that he was working at was close, and he had to get off work, put all the kids' chairs in his truck, and take me home. So it was pretty much a nightmare, and of course, we had to handle buying four new tires, uh, which we I needed anyways, but it was like that one expense you're not expecting, and so we had to cancel my little uh, birthday extravaganza, and I was super upset, but whatever. And then I started thinking, this happened last year. I'm having a hard time last year. And then I remember this concept that I heard my entire life growing up in Brazil, but I never really believed in. It, I actually had to do some deep Google research to find a definition in English because apparently it's not something used here. I don't know. You guys can tell me. It's an astrology concept called Zodiac Hell. And of course, growing up Christian and you know my mom being a pastor, it wasn't something I believed in. Uh, but now I, like I've said before, you know, I've opened myself up a lot more and I believe one thing doesn't exclude the other. And I honestly feel like everything that happens with us is a mashup of our own energies, our personalities, our environment. Like there's so much that comes into play. Um, and let me know if you've heard of this or believe in it or have noticed it in your own life, um, around your birthday. So Zodiac Hell is the period of 30 days before your birthday when it's like Murphy's Law is at its highest. Basically, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. 
And that's because your energy levels are very low as you're about to get recharged for the new year. So it was definitely making sense for me. But even so, um, it's it was hard for me to accept how everything was going wrong, especially like the day before my birthday. It was like, all right, I'm going to have a good time on my birthday. That's fine. Um, and then so my birthday was on Sunday and we were planning to go out uh, for just a quick date Saturday night. Um, I had someone watch the kids while they slept and I had everything set up. And then all of a sudden Shane starts feeling terrible. I don't know if it's something he ate or what it was, but he got sick and we had to cancel. And I was like, oh great, here we go. <laughs> and then on the day of several things started going on. Um, I wanted to go get my nails done, but of course the place didn't open till 11. It was like a time crunch, um, between all the things that I wanted to do and coordinate it with the sitter. Cause I wanted to go out to eat with the kids and then have her come stay while they napped so we could go out just me and Shane like it was crazy and I was just like oh my gosh this is miserable I can't believe this is happening I want to have a good time on my birthday but everything is going against it and then I started thinking how do I do that how do I have a good time anyway when nothing is going my way you just have to choose to and this is what I always say when I was having the hardest time. Um, and so I did. I, I made it a point to be in the moment, be grateful for what was happening, regardless of what it was. Like I wanted to have uh, sung happy birthday at the, at the restaurant, but we were so rushed. They, they knew it was my birthday. They didn't, they didn't even bring anything out. So we got dessert for home, and I literally just put candles on a piece of cake from the restaurant and we all sang happy birthday, but it was magical. It was amazing because I was in a better state of mind. Like I made it. I made, I was like, no, there's no freaking way I'm going to dread this day and the things that I'm doing. I'm going to love it. It's going to be amazing. And so I did. And so because I'm always talking about, you know, being in control of your thoughts and your emotions, I was like, I have to share this and, and bring this message of when you're dreading something, it doesn't make it better. And I actually found a quote that's genius. It says, the dreading is worse than the doing. And it really is. I mean, think about it. With anything in life, even just the smallest things, like I don't want to clean the bathroom today. And then you just keep putting it off. Because it's like, it's not pleasant. It's not a cool activity, you know. But the, the more you put it off, like it's not helping you. you it has to get done, you know. For, like and it goes for anything in life and so then when you actually gather up the strength to be like it's it's fine you know and you give yourself that pep talk it's it's going to take me like five to ten minutes it's really not that bad and then I'm going to be proud of what I accomplished and then I can wait a whole other week or however long it is until I clean it again it's going to be okay like give yourself that talk and then you notice it's not so bad so why do we have this tendency of dreading things you know when it's not helping us getting that thing done or going through that, even if it's not something that we want to go through. You know what I mean? And so I wanted to encourage you today to ditch the dreading. I know it's easier said than done, but it's, it's a process. Just like I was telling you, it's not something that I did just like that. I had to really make myself enjoy the moment because I wanted to. I didn't want to have those feelings. And it really is a habit. It is a habit because if it's something that's hard for you to shake, it's because you've grown so accustomed to it. It's like it's like you want to feel those feelings. Of course, you don't, but you are so used to it that it's familiar, so it's easier to stay in that state. Does that make sense? That's why change is hard because it's not familiar, so you have to adapt. But it is possible. So just like anything in life, um, you know, if you want to change a bad habit, you have to replace it with a different habit, and it better be a good habit, right? So, um, and I said this the other day, if you have the tendency, you know, have a sweet tooth, which I totally do, and you want to eat something sweet every single time after a meal, or it's just like what you crave, especially that time of month, or if you are frustrated or whatever, how are you going to get rid of that? It's hard to just go, go cold turkey, and even if you think of addiction... It's similar. I don't want to get into that, but you have to be able to replace that with something else. And so, you know, maybe you're going to drink some tea. Maybe you're going to have a piece of fruit or whatever. And it's the same thing with our thoughts. So if you have this tendency of dreading Mondays 
and it's like, you know, the whole thing of I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to become an entrepreneur and I'm not going to dread Mondays anymore, but you're going to dread something in life. Okay. How can you make this process less annoying, less miserable for yourself? And it's not eliminating the thing that you dread completely because you're going to find something else that you're going to dread. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to have to replace that with the habit of being in the moment and enjoying it anyways. It is possible, guys, you know? So just making that a habit and refusing to get disappointed and to get annoyed, it's totally possible because you are in control of who you are. And we forget that. So we just let ourselves get carried away with these terrible emotions like it's a thing, like it, like someone's forcing us to feel that. No, no one's forcing you to feel or think anything. You're your own person. And that's the beauty and also the hard thing because you have to live with yourself, right? You, ha- you are the only person you have to live with. Of course, you have kids and all the things, but at the end of the day, it's you and only you. And forever, it's going to be only you. So you have this power to control how you feel and how you really experience life. And um, this actually has a lot to do with um, the earlier episode this week with Jackie Peterson, when she talks about the different challenges that she had to face in life, the big changes that she had to face in life. And this is, this happens for all of us in different ways, right? Uh, But even for me, you know, I moved countries three times. Um, I, you know, had to endure spending time away from my family, getting accustomed to a different culture. Um, Then I had to get, wrap my brain around the idea of having triplets and I'm still doing it. It's, it's a process. (laughs) And you just have to deal with it. You just have to, I mean, we deal with things, but what's the best way of dealing with something so that you're actually enjoying life and not dreading every single day, every single moment? That's the point I want to make. So I really wanted you to reflect on this because like everything that I talk about, it goes for life. It goes for motherhood. It goes for entrepreneurship. Like, and I, and I catch myself doing this, like dreading certain activities in my business. And when you do that, Not only is it an indication that it's something that you need to do because you're dreading it, it's also an indication of you having some kind of fear, some kind of resistance to that one activity for some reason. And that's what I've been doing is going through this work of understanding why I'm feeling what I'm feeling. Where is this coming from? Let's change it. You know, it's a lot easier to make a change if you really weigh the pros and cons, if you really understand where things are coming from. And again, this is the type of work that I do with my students one-on-one on my eight-week program. We dig deep into these, th- into these you know, thoughts, into these feelings, into all of these things that are affecting your success or that are preventing your success and your ability of moving forward with your business because it's all mindset, you guys. It's all mindset. So you have to do this inner work, this mental work, hit the mental gym, whatever you want to call it, to overcome these things and reach your goals, you know, achieve the things that you've been hoping for in your life and in your business. So if you're struggling with all of this, I would love to have a conversation with you um, and just listen to you and help you see where these things are coming from. And that's where my strategy calls come in place. We just literally hop on the phone and have a conversation about what's not working in your business and where you want to be. And then I talk to you about steps that we can take together to get there. And if it's something that I can't help you with, I will also let you know. But of course, we're going to have fun along the way. And that's one of the things that lots of ladies tell me, like the 40, 45 minutes or whatever that we take on the phone. It's like one of the most amazing conversations you can have in your life because it's really shedding light on the things that you're not paying attention to, that you're not giving much thought to. And those are exactly the things that you need to be looking at to make the changes to see what you want to see, so to see the success that you want to see. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. You have no idea how much I appreciate your support. And if you haven't taken the time to rate the show and leave us a review, please do so. I created a highlight on my stories on Instagram to show you exactly how to do it. It's super simple. And if you're not following us on Instagram, what are you waiting for? It's Mom Does It All podcast, and my personal account is just Mom Does It All. Until next time, bye.